Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Douche! Smile to Jannah. <laughs> okay, let me start off with a dilemma, a predicament, a conundrum of sorts. As you can see, I've been hitting the old thesaurus. So the predicament is, let me show you. During the fear of the virus, the fear of the Muslims will diminish. And we do not want a period of time where the fear of the Muslims goes down. What do we do? So at this moment in time, a budding student raises his hand to offer a solution. Sir, what if we use picture of Muslims when we're reporting the coronavirus? Yes, young pubescent student. That is an excellent suggestion. That way we kill two birds with one stone. And those two birds, one of them are the Muslims. Let's make that explicitly clear. So as we can see through that, um, not, not a great demonstration, but I mean budget problems, isn't it? You can see even during such a terrible and terrifying pandemic, some people just cannot hide their prejudice against Muslims. The association between the virus and Muslims and Islam is done quite subtly. But if you compile all those reports, it's actually quite disturbing. Here is a report to do with worldwide cases. Got a Muslim there. Here is another report. This is to do with Spain's restrictions. Lo and behold, Muslims. Next you've got South Korea, Australia and the US. The three countries that whenever you mention, the first thing that comes to mind of course is Muslims. Next we got Donald Trump. Yeah, let's link him to Muslims as well. Why not? Next we got borders. Yep, immigration. Mm, I can kind of see that, but I'd expect a bit better from the BBC. Next, Global warming and pollution. Yeah, plonk it on the Muslims. Next we got general updates on the virus. It's just general updates. Then we have global social distancing. Yep, global social distancing. Definitely Muslims. Uh, global tracking. Indeed, the kid looks as confused as me at this moment in time, frankly. The BBC, of course, are not the only ones that are doing this. Here you've got a rather concerning link between sex workers and Muslim kids. So I think it's quite sickening, frankly, very worrying. Of course I'd put screenshots of the Daily Mail, but I mean, if you were to compare the Daily Mail with toilet paper, I think that's quite offensive. To the toilet paper, of course, you know what I'm saying. And for the few deluded amongst you that are saying, it's done using algorithms and it's done randomly and it depends on stock images and blah, blah, blah. Okay, all right, no problem. Let me entertain that pathetic rebuttal for one second. Send me some pictures of the virus and the Jews, the virus and Sikhs, or the virus and Christians. If you can't do so, respectfully, shut your cake hole, mate. For those of you that have basic knowledge of psychology, this is called conditioning, yeah? You condition a sound or a picture or an instance or something to do with another thing, such that if you hear or see one thing, it immediately makes you think of something else. For example, the famous experiment a lot of people are familiar with is Pavlov and the dogs where he was able to link ringing a bell to food. So anytime the dogs heard the bell, they immediately linked it to food. So that's what we're seeing nowadays with the word terrorism, with the word extremism, and now with the coronavirus now as well. Our TV licensing fees go towards the BBC, whether we like it or not. So they are using our money. So they need to be a bit more responsible than the toilet paper. Uh, sorry, so, sorry, toilet paper. That's my bad. Alright, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Until next time. Assalamu alaikum.